I got Ronnie Shields here with me, man. Um, Ronnie. I'm wondering what was the preparations you guys had to use with Adamick in order to keep his his, his feet so so mobile. Right. Well, yeah, let me tell you something. If you go look at his feet right now, right, from us training for the last eight weeks, he has blisters under both feet. Blisters wow. under both feet right now. You know, and this is from training because he's never moved like that. He never boxed like that. You know, he didn't run. He fought. I mean, he boxed, and uh, when Chris got Close, he threw combinations, stepped out of there, we made Chris use his legs, we made Chris throw punches. How much film did you guys watch of Chris? Because there, there's something that I saw in there, which, what uh, Adamick was doing. Every time Chris would want to throw that left hook, Adamick made sure when he threw his right, he would go, but then kind of do like a Mayweather type of move, which is go under right away to walk out. And every day, I made him throw that right hand and roll and get out of there. He's never done that before. You know, he's never done it before. You know, especially with the head movement, he's never done that before. So I told him, you can't win just on boxing a bit alone. You got to make him miss, got to make him get tired, you know, but you just can't let him set his feet. You let him set his feet, that's bad news for us. So, and he just kept him on, kept him on balance the whole night. Now, you know, Adamick has been known to be a big puncher. It, it looked like in this bout, you guys taught him not to commit. Because if he committed, he was going to stay in the pocket too long. How difficult was that to kind of drill in his head to not do those type of trends that he was used to doing? That was, that was, that was very easy. I just told him, if you want to get knocked out, you got to stand right in front of him. If you want to win, you got to throw punches, get out of there, and keep the jab in his face the whole time. I said, look, Chris get hit with right hands all night long. I said, look. He said, but he keeps his hands up. I said, look, when you jabbing him, He's going to try to knock the jab down. The right hand will hit him every time, and it worked perfect. Watching his career, you know, of Adamick, I, I, I had said that in order for him to beat Chris, he would have to watch the way Vitaly Klitschko did it. You know, made sure his back never touched those ropes, made sure he was giving himself angles, you know, to keep Chris off balance and never allow him to set. When you were called on to help out, you know, to get this heavyweight ready to be prepared, were, were you in, in belief that you can do it, or was this, you know, like, oh, man, you know what, this is going to be a tough job. This is, this is a task. Well, look, I knew it was going to be tough. I mean, without a doubt. But here's one thing I did. I went back and I looked at the Strata fight, you know, mm -hmm. with, with, with Tomas. I looked at the Strata fight. Then I went and I looked at Chris, a couple of Chris fights. I, the one with, uh, with uh, Walker, Travis Walker, and... Uh, the other one where, uh, I forget the other guy's name. And I watched, everybody stood right in front of him. Boom, 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 hit him. And even, you know, Walker dropped him. Right. But stood right in front of him, stood right in front of him, and let Chris come back. And, you know, Chris is strong. Chris can punch. Mm -hmm. But you make him miss. Mm -hmm. I, I noticed how he started getting tired. You know, and look, let me tell you something. I watched another fight when he fought, uh, uh, I can't think of the guy's name, but they, they fought in Las Vegas. Uh, Chris weighed about maybe 230. Mm -hmm. That Chris right there would have, would have been a much harder fight right. for, for Tomas tonight. At 230 pounds, Chris Arreola is very difficult to beat. Where do you guys go now with Thomas? Well, I mean, you know, it's hard to say right now. You know, because right now Thomas had a lot of options. You know, I mean, he does. He has a lot of options. He don't have to go up and, and right now and fight for a world title. He don't have to do that. So, you know, I think the whole team has got to sit down and see what's the next best move. Let me ask you this. Out of all the guys that <laughs> moved from cruiserweight to go in the heavyweight division, you know, from David Hay, from James Tony, even Roy Jones, you know, um, do you feel that that Thomas is is by far the more credible guy right now because he took on one of the more dangerous heavyweights? Without a doubt. I mean, without a doubt. I mean, let me tell you something, man. I have always said that Chris Arrolo was in the top three or four heavyweights in the world, always. But again, yeah, I think if Chris would dedicate himself and get down 230, I'm telling you, he'll be a dangerous from for anybody. But give Adamic. A lot of credit because he Absolutely. did. Yeah. He took on one of the hardest hitting, best heavyweights in the world today. And, then, and you know, and but I tell you something. Uh, when you look at Tomas in, in all his fights, you know, I mean, he always throw a lot of punches. He make the fight. You know, he had to do a 360. 
in right. order to fight Chris Arola. And he did that. We got Ronnie Shields, brother. Thank you very much, man. Thank you, man. Appreciate it.